Well, hello, man cavers. We are back from our trip to the old cafe at Kent. Let's have a look at what we bought. We'll get straight into it. Now, I was sent a preview video of the guy, but it was dark around there, and the video he sent was not that clear because the light was bad. So I didn't see half of these. I made this one out in his video. Didn't even see this one. Got there. Kind of fell in love. I know the engine's not particularly rare being a Jap 55, but it is a 55, so it's a twin, and I do like a Jap. So that's the biggest Jap I believe they made, the uh, Model 55 twin. Why cool, a eh, mag? Just look at the little H HT arrangement around the back here for your twin leads, with a little router in there. Oh. So yes, but the thing about this is the compressor. Look at the size of that compressor. Now this was a water-cooled compressor. I've never seen that before. This outlet here we had to gas off. That was actually plumbed into a big 280 litre air receiver. And these had cooling lines to them. And they shared a cooling tank with a Lister CS. So these were actually plumbed into a cooling system. So this is obviously water-cooled compressor never seen one let's have a look on the bottom here can we have a look right it's dated 1914 and it's a lacy is it you'll be able to work out better than me lacy Holbert cool limited pump number 12372 there you go I think that 14 is just a patent number, though. I don't think this was manufactured then, because this engine certainly wasn't. I'm pretty sure they didn't make Jap 55s back then, but I'm guessing this is sort of 1940s, I think. Yeah, I'm guessing this is 40s. Wouldn't have thought it would be a military application. It's grey. Do that mean it could be a Navy version? Don't know. Do we paint this? Or do we just oily rag it? Because it has still got a fair bit of its original paint. Hmm. All right, we'll move on from this. And let's have a look at the BAM Ford. Now, I like anything with Ford on the back. So we've got a BAM Ford. And this has got, look at this for a bit of, um, the bloke owned a calf and can't you tell? He's fashioned a tea urn as a water vessel. Now, how's that? Because the Bamfords originally had their own water vessel on these manifolds. He's fashioned one out of a tea urn. Now, I like that. He even got the go handle. He even got the thing where the tap used to be. Now, this, that's man cave approved. 100% will be staying. We either paint that to tone it down or we make a feature of it and <laughs> get the stainless steel cleaner on it. What do you reckon? The engine itself, Bamford, EG, EG, EG3. I thought originally it was an SV3, but then noticed that some of the throttle controls just looked a little bit different. This governor control here looked a bit different to the SV3. Location of the mag, I thought, was a bit different. What this little tank is on this strap, I couldn't tell you. But there's our engine plate here saying it is an SG3 600 RPM model AH606 but that is SG3 so there we go this little tank on here don't know all I can assume is maybe maybe the guy used to run this on paraffin but it ain't a petrol paraffin model so what I'm guessing he probably did he probably had his fuel line come up. The fuel line probably come up into a T. And then off the other T went to the, or on a three-way three on a Y. And then he'd have sort of one go up to a normal petrol tank. He'd have one come up to here and one up to here. And he could switch the petrol, he could switch the paraffin off. Put petrol in this one, turn this one on. So you start it on petrol. And when it got hot, turn this tank off. And turn the paraffin one on. Do you know what I mean? Just a guess. Why else would this little tank be here? It's certainly not going to be a full-time running tank. Because 
well, it's the size of a Coke can. You'd get about 10 minutes out of it and this would be dead. So we have that. All right, now let's have a look at some of the more interesting stuff. Excuse the state of the shed. It's half been used as a dumping ground. Now then, a lot of you noticed on my Facebook post about my magnetos. Well, here I've had another dig out. And we have all these magnetos. Oh, aren't they lovely? So, if on some of the engines you see the magnetos are missing, i.e. the Ruston APR off picked up, which takes an EK, I have three EKs here. There we go. So we have three EKs there. One of them must work. We have, yeah, there's more mags than this. I'll show you the rest of them in a minute. I've got... Um, I think there's another bucket and a tray full. I think there's 60 magneto, magnetos all together. But some of these, I mean, this is a big four-cylinder one, probably off a tractor. You know, we've got some really nice old magnetos here. And this one, even got new on it, look. Do you know what I mean? This Waiko A here has even got new on a sticker on the top. So no doubt, but Waiko A's, Waipak, sorry, I tend to find these are brilliant mags. Love them. They tend to give very little trouble to me. But we've got no end of these. We've got no end of these Waipak. I've, le I've left all the sort of common ones outside. There's a couple of rarer ones out there that I just couldn't be bothered to get in here. But I don't want to leave them all outside, so I will be putting them... I'm going to get an old chest of drawers or something and put beside the bench here and store all these mags and engine parts in here because we have lots more. I know you keep getting a glimpse of this. We'll be to it in a minute. So yeah, there we are. There are all our magnetos. Because we have got also two Peta M's to pick up and a, a Manco. And I know the Amanco doesn't have a mag on it. I'm assuming the Amanco mag was taken off and put in storage with this lot. Let me tell you the story. Um, yeah, basically we go down to this place. You'll see, you've seen the video of it. In one of the sheds there, there was an old tin wardrobe, an old tin cupboard with opening doors. Had shelves on it about sort of, you know, six inches apart, but it was half dark in there. I opened up, <coughs> beg your pardon, I opened up the cupboard, and I basically see three shelves, and there was about six mags on each shelf. That's all I could make out, all I could see. And I said to the bloke, what are you doing with the mags? He's like, they're all gone, mate, all gone. So I shot him a prize, and he said, yep, that'll do, but you take the lot. All right, I says. Just thinking it was, the uh, you know, six and the six on each shelf. It weren't until I took the six out of the first shelf, I noticed there was another six behind it, and another six behind it, and another six behind it. And all three shelves of that, this cupboard was full deep of magnetos. And we had to carry them out of there in a wooden crate. And we could get about, I don't know, 15 mags in each one, and we could barely lift the damn thing. That was so heavy. But there was not just mags there. There was, I picked up some carbs as well. Ooh, yes, I was hoping I picked up a carb. For that lister out there, that one, my SG2, which has got a carb on, but the wrong one. So I think I've picked up a Zenith F, what was it, 26 F, FV, something like that. Anyhow, we've got some mags here with rotor arms on, look. These two have got little rotor arms on the top. Do we need a flash here, or are they going to make a lot of difference? Yeah, I've got rotor arms on these ones. We've got an ML here, another ML, another ML, is that a BTH? These BTH, aren't they? BTH, BTH. These are quite common. This is off some, this is some sort of flick mag. Off of something. Someone will tell me what this one is. This is probably a quite a rare one. I don't know. I'm sure there's somebody out there who would probably want that. But at the minute, guys... I've had people message me already, did I want to sell some mags? Did I want to get rid of some? No, no. At the minute, guys, I'm keeping all of this stuff until I've got all my engines sorted. Because the last thing I want to do is get rid of a mag or something, then find I need one on one of the engines I've bought. And then I'll go through these mags 
and I'll just clean the points up on them, see which of them have got sparks, which haven't, and we can go from there. But I certainly will be keeping these three because I know these are quite expensive and not that easy to find anymore. So I will be keeping the EK mags. So please don't ask about the EKs. Things I've got lots of duplicates of. These BTH mags, I seem to have no end of them. I think I see one or two had the advanced and retard on the back, like a Crossley. Can't remember where they are, but I'm sure some of them have got the little arm on the back. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, here's one with an arm on. Look, this would be like for a Crossley. So, yeah, I'd be keeping that because I've got a Crossley, and if I ever need a mag, I've now got one. So we've got mags. Anyhow, you're all thinking, oh, starting handles. I got, ooh, and also I found this in the corner, and he said, that's yours, you know that, little pump, isn't that lovely, so we've got a little water pump here, with an impala, be lovely on a little engine, ah, put him under there, I have crank handles galore, if you can identify these handles, go you ahead, write in the comments, I think a couple of these are rusting handles, We've got two or three Peta M hook handles of varying sizes. Some big, some small. Uh, but I think a lot of these are Listers and Rustons. A lot of Lister handles in there. Nothing really unusual on the handles. But if I ever need to make a handle for something, I've now got plenty where I can sacrifice some. So we've got then. And, right. Ah. <sighs> Do you want to look around this now? Because a lot of people have commented, what is this? A lot of people have messaged me in the last 12 hours just after putting the post on stationary engine group of, oh, I picked up some nice stuff today. I've had no end of people messaging me wanting to buy this. Sorry, not for sale. This is actually the thing I really went down for. I absolutely love this thing. Um, yeah, Stuart Sandhurst or Stuart Turner Sandhurst. It does turn, but I haven't turned it at full revolution. And I'll tell you for why. Because over the years, this was in a shed that had no windows in it. The door was off it. And I think, looking at how the bloke had kept and stored things, I think this was probably stored okay originally. But over the years, it dropped or the bench it was on collapsed and it fell head first. So this piece weren't resting in the ground, it was resting downwards. So this whole engine was sitting downwards and dust and crap and cobwebs have gone everywhere, including in that ball. Like I say, it does turn, but I don't want to do a full revolution with it because there's crud in all these gears. I did put a little bit of WD-40 on these yesterday. That's dried off overnight. But we need to clean this totally, you know try and blow out this cylinder clean all them little gears out with a little copper brush a little brass brush and then maybe turn this engine take the big end cap off clean all that with brake cleaner and reassemble it with oil but yes this thing is beautiful little Stuart Sanders I did notice the valves are free that. the valves are free on this little thing I love the little the little tiny fuel tank what's been put on up, which clips on, look. There's two clips on that. And that clips on the side of this coolant tank. There you go. Just clips on. The coolant tank itself is okay, but it has holes. Look in the bottom. The bottom's rotted out. There was an old bit of chain and stuff in here, but... We've obviously got to clean all this out, take these water pipes off. This one's not even connected at the front of the engine now. It's come off over the years. But these little soft lines here will be replaced because they've gone hard as a carp, along with this one. But this thing, yeah, is adorable. Absolutely love that little thing. So, yeah, absolutely love this thing. And if you're wondering how big this is, hang on, let me just... Grab a steel rule. I have a foot ruler here. For those of you that work in old money. Here we go. Nine inch them flywheels. And the whole engine. 
we're sort of at the back of the engine there a foot comes to there so we're one foot so we're 13 14 15 16 about 18 inches look there you go yeah one foot plus six we're about 18 inches in total for this engine it's lovely and how wide is it edge of the flywheel the end of the mag it's about a foot that mag does stick out a bit i have seen stuart sandhurst before i think i've seen one in real life but looking on youtube there seemed to be one guy that's done several videos of one of these and a few odd people and i don't think i've seen one with another mag arrangement quite like this or is there a, or did some of them have a cover over something tells me the other ones I've seen on... I may be wrong here. But I think the other ones had the mag up higher. Maybe not. I don't know. Either way, this mag arrangement looks slightly different to the ones I've seen on the internet. Unless there was a cover on there. You know, that mag chain has actually not seized up at all. I mean, it's sticky and gummy, but... We might be able to get away without taking this engine to pieces... And I'm putting all out of time. If there are timing marks, we could do that and then just bang it back together. But I don't know whether there is timing marks on it. There probably is. We'll get into this one anyhow. But yeah, this is the one I went for. Oh, the exhaust comes off easy. That's good. Yeah, this is definitely the one I was interested in. Even the little oiler is not broken. Hasn't been knocked, not broken. Oh, don't ah, it does turn. Look, there you go. That's open. But yeah, this is just a brilliant little thing. Absolutely love it. There we go, the little Stuart. Right, let's have a look. What else did we get? A um, couple of odd pieces I chucked in here yesterday. I got a nice old school battery charger. Look at that, it's tin as well. None of your plastic crap. Nice old school battery charger. Another nice old school battery charger. She isn't old, look at that. But this one, just one hanging on the wall. Have you ever heard of that make in Dura? Made in England? I should imagine that's quite a decent old charger. But we'll see. What else did we get? Lots more stuff. But that means going out to the cycle shed. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I put in here yesterday. Oh, a couple more mags I stuck down there yesterday. I did pick that. There was a couple more mags there. Did I pick anything else up in here yesterday? Handles, mag... Oh, these old spark plugs. Look at these. Brand new, never been un never been opened box of 45S spark plugs. 14 mil reach. I just like the advertising. Do you know what I mean? Fire ring spark plugs. Look, look at that. Beautiful. And here there's another full box of 10. There isn't one missing. But somebody has opened this box. But this box is unopened and will remain unopened. That will be put on display somewhere. Probably on some little shelves up here. Stand them up. They'll never be opened and used. These ones possibly. But again, where are you going to find? Brand new spot. Look at that. I absolutely love the graphics on this. And if I take them outside so you can get them in daylight. And we actually see the colour. I mean, that is brilliant, isn't it? Look at that. Sorry, that's a bit anarchy and a bit sad, but I absolutely love the condition of this. I mean, these plugs have got to be 1970s, I'm guessing. Where are you going to find them? Where are you going to find 1970s plugs that haven't even never been undone? You're not. Not, not in boxes of 10 like that. And not in that condition. That box is like new. Let's have a go outside. Oh, where did that other little box of plugs go? Now, this is all stuff I had. Right, we're seeing this, seeing this. Oh, there are some things we want to check while we're here. We'll come to the cycle shed. Because I'm sure I got some odd spark plugs as well. And there were some blue ones in there, which I thought were a bit different. Where are they? I do not know. Right. Here's the rest of our magnetos. We've got a load more magnetos in there. All pretty common ones, I think. We have another bucket full of magnetos there. So we have tons of magnetos. Coolant tank. 
There we go. The guy made this for something. Comes with a flexi hose in it, which has just fell out. Now, this coolant tank had been handmade because in his shed, he had all the machines that had put roll tops on them, the old hand crank machines with the, like the little knurled wheel and the blades. And they'd put all these knurled tops in, put all these ribs in sheet steel. He had sheet benders, metal lays, about three of them. I mean, it was a honey hole. And this thing was in here, this flexi rubber hose. So yeah, I picked that up. Ah, I picked up ah, a couple of bed runners. Engine runners, nice cast ones with the adjusters on, really good. Loads of fuel tanks, I've got to pick another box of fuel tanks up when I go. That one's still got some of the original Rust and Hornsby decal and the original tap on it. So we've got a Rust and tap, we've got what looks like a pretty much new, would that be Lister D? I don't know, Lister D, your fans among you are going to kill me for this, because it probably isn't, but it looks like a new old stock Lister D tank. I mean, that is pretty pump, pretty spotless. Another fuel tank. Another tank, which has obviously been, rep you know, repainted and prepped for paint. That looked like a Petter A1 or something. Another fuel tank. Set of wheels on an axle. Really nice. But we've got loads and loads of wheels to pick up. A box of the uh, a rail of the old school HT lead. Some black... Some yellow, green, some red. This is for the low tension. Probably will go on that EK out of that, um, out of that thing, out of that rustin. This was just sitting on the scrap pile. An old electric meter, look. No good to anybody. What am I going to do with an oily rag up and hang it in the shed? No spit of wall up. Box of pipe fittings. I went over there with Mrs. Man Cave. But also, my mate Paul come over as well. He came and picked up the big crossley. You might have seen him on the engine club as well. And so did my mate Jeff Shingles and Keith. They came over as well and picked some bits up. But they came Sunday. I was there Saturday and snapped up what I needed then. But we've got a lovely tank here. That's a nice little tank. That might run for that little, um, I don't know, we're on that on something. But say, Paul Neve, he bought another box of pipe fittings, three times the size of that. And then I remembered, ha, ah, I need some pipe fittings. And he, I found these two bits in his box and said, Paul, can I borrow these? Because I need a long piece for my list of G. Because if you remember, my list of G. Hello, John. Right? Yep, yeah, my Can list. Hang on, I'll speak to you in a minute. And say, my list of G was missing an exhaust pipe. So I found these while we was in Kent in Paul's box. That one looked too small. Now, see this recess in here? There should be a pipe come up here. Look at that. That is the right pipe. Thank you very much, Paul. We just need a list of silence that'll go on the top. So we have found our exhaust extension we needed. Also, this is the carb, what come with this list of G. The wrong one, this is a brass Solex. Look like that's a marine version of some sort for anti-corrosion. I did pick up a pair of Zenith carbs. Let's go and get one of them Zenith carbs and see if that's the right one to fit. So let's come back round here and pick up one of these Zenith carbs out of the box. Because I'm pretty sure they are, look, not one, but two. Now I'm hoping one of these are going to be right for that engine. So let's take one. Let's take one of these and see if that will fit on this engine. All right, where are we? So our, our governor rod is here. So we need a rod to come down to the carb. There's our carb. Yep, there's our main butterfly on this side. Here's our choke. Our choke is down there, but will it fit up there? Look at that. That is the right carb for this list of GT. 26FV. Solex. It is a Solex, not a Zenith. Ah, okay. But there we go. I think that is the right carb for this engine. And there'd obviously be a fuel pipe come down. Because this one... 
Although it fitted, this, it's hard to do this one hand, this um, rod sticking out the side would hit on that centre nut under there. So this carb, see what I mean? There's, that's up as far as it'll go, and there's a little gap in there, look, where it wouldn't quite fit all the way. But this one, perfect look. That is the one. So we have a carb now and an exhaust for our Lister G. Let me put all these back in this box actually. Good morning. So yes, over the moon with how all my developments went over the weekend. We now have two of them carbs. I have another box of carbs to pick up as well. Ah, that looked like an old Lister D carb there. Another Lister D carb. Another carb off sudden. Oh, that's an Amal carb, okay. Oh, these are all Amals, right, okay. So we've got them cars, but I say I do have another three crates that size full of carbs to get. I've managed to find what I'm going to use as a exhaust with a bonzer. There we go. So we're going to cut this bend off here. Put our flexi over there. And this is our silencer for the bonzer. Absolutely brilliant. Looks nice and period to go on that bonzer as well. We're seeing this box of mags. I'm going to pull out that tin in a minute because there are some treasures in there. But let's have a look over this Ruston APR first. I have, yes, just screwed the oiler back in. Uh, there was a greaser missing out of here. That was just straight open into the crank. There should be a greaser like that side. We'll get to that in a minute. The mag was off, but I think the bolts are in there. I think it's one of them mags, them MLs that are in, not oh, MLs, them EKs what are in the shed. I think the guy probably took it off here and stored them all in that cupboard. I screwed that and I found that on site. That's a little oiler. That's not gonna stay. We've got to get a proper greaser for that. We did come with a spare cylinder head. So whether this one has got a crack on and he was going to change it, I do not know. Or was this just a spare he had lying about and he picked a spare one up? No valve, but this head, this head looks cool. This head looks fine to me. I think we might have to titivate this valve a little, but this engine does turn. Oh, that's rubbing on this tin at the back. That's rubbing on that side. No. There we go. See, so this engine does turn, but again, I haven't done a full revolution until I have well and truly cleaned this up. Again, I did squirt some WD-40 on there yesterday just to get things going. Squirt some WD in the mains, down the greaser caps. I did squirt some bits in there just to give her a chance to get her a bit loose. She was free. She weren't seized up by any means, but you don't want to go turning these engines over slow without you know dry like that because that's been sitting for years so there's our apr it has a lovely little rust and decal on here so again what do we do with this do we just clean this clean the hell out of this gnarly ragged or do we paint it i don't know i really don't know whether to paint this one up really nice or just sort of you know shine the flywheel surfaces up and Give the rest of it an oily rag. I think this is, yeah, this is not original paint. I, ah, I got some cards. The guy had cards for every single engine where he'd written them and had them in a little binder in the house. And uh, Lulu, the lady that was sorting all this out with her husband, Steve, she actually went through and pulled all the cards out for the engines I got and gave them to me. I think they are actually... Yeah, I think they're on the seat in the camper van, which is locked at the minute. But yeah, I do have cards, and I think that said on the card, this was restored 1985, I think it said. So it's been restored, but a long time ago. What else do we get? Right, let me get this tin out, because just flashing the camera in there isn't going to do this any justice. Hang on, bear with. So let me just grab this tin out of here. 
because that's worth a look in its own right. Ah. Oh my word. Oh, I love it. On guys, I'm going to have to pull a little trailer out to get that box out because that's quite heavy. Go on, to it. there you go. All right, let me get this lot out, guys. Ah, I'll put it up here. Look. All right. Oh. Now the little tin itself was just lying on the floor outside, but look. Listed Ursley, England, with a tap. I think this come out of the milking section, didn't it, when they made milking equipment. But I do have a list of milk cooler as well. Not from this point, but what I've had for a number of years. Good stable, mate. Let's have a look what we've got in here. I found an original old Lumax headlight, which we're going to put on the Bonza. Hopefully this chrome will clean up. Think it's perfectly savable. Paint the back end of this. I think that'll be a nice light for the bonzer, don't you? Ah, there we go. I picked up some lovely little oil cans. Now this is getting idle. We've got a standard old school oil can here. We've all seen them. But what I did like was this little popper here. Little oil dripper. Can't quite make the can't quite read the make out on that. But also look at this. A little tin Singer. Singer sewing machine oil look. And that ain't rust. That is just grease. That will clean up. This tin will clean up like new. Ooh. Ooh. I think she's a bit... Well, this one's actually got oil in it. Yeah, this one's got oil. Something in it. Do you know I want cleaning out in the end? Anyhow, we've got them oil... Little oil cans. I'm not being anal with oil cans. Out of the shed where cool out of the shed where all the um magnetos were. We come across this. And I said to him, I need that little tray of bits. So let's have a look at what bits we've got in here. We have some lovely condition oilers. No, none of them will fit that rusting, and yes, the glass is broken, the rusting oiler. But we've got some lovely oilers here with no broken glass. These are all in drawers. Look at this one. Absolute beauty look. Looks like new. Beautiful condition oiler. Look at that. Nice big one. Beautiful. Another oiler here. Nice condition as well. No broken glass. Just needs a clean. Brand new. Brand new. Wyco A tops. Carb tops. Oh, another Zenith carb. But one of the things, these, right. See this? Bamford SG3. This was actually tied to these two. So that Bamford... We have a pair of brand new conrods with white metal bearings there, look. So if anybody needs a conrod for an SG3 Bamford, let me know, because I'll probably never use them. But they will just, for now, be hung in the shed. But if anybody does need one, complete with white metal bearing, let me know, I'll sell you one. But, oh, another little oiler here. That's got, yeah, that glass is all broken, but it'd probably be oil tight. Another oiler here with no glass in it. But the other thing I liked was there's more. Are these greases or oilers, guys? Bit unfamiliar with what these ones are. They look like giant greases to me. Are these greases or oilers? Let me know. Can't see they'd be oilers because you can't see how much is in them. I'd assume they'd be a giant greaser. But yeah, so we've got a pair of them. Here are these little blue spark plugs, look. Loads of these, these are all brand new. Some of them still got the, still got the cardboard on them, look. I think they all had the cardboard on them. Some of the cardboard fell off. But have you ever heard of this maker plug? Look at these little bad boys. They are Pacey. P-A-C-Y, made in England. 
and these are all spanking brand new look never been fitted to an engine and i thought being blue quite unusual now how many of them have we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven we have eleven of them and i think there was probably another ten in a spark plug drawer over there when I go back again, I'll probably buy the rest of the plugs off them as well. Because although we had some people there Sunday, we had some people come over Sunday to look at stuff. There were still about four sheds. We didn't show them people in because they had all these bits, all the magnetos. And on Saturday, me and the owner said, look, just we'll keep these sheds to ourselves. Because he basically didn't want them turned upside down. I respectfully went through them sheds a little bit and just picked out some bits. So yeah, there were three sheds with all new old stock parts, which we did keep quiet about. We weren't letting people in there. That was between us. Lovely old champion plug here. Look at that, still, still got the instructions. Look at this. I'm probably never going to use these plugs because I'll have nothing to use them for, but I just like how they're all still in their original paper. Look at that. And the little cap on the bottom to protect it isn't cardboard back then, it's rubber. Look at that tiny little plug. Wow. Look at that lovely piece of advertising there. Look at that. Still got the original paper. The plug come wrapped in. You know, I might, if I'm really careful, I might lay this piece of paper out and put it in a little frame and hang that on the wall and put this little box in a cabinet. No point keeping all this in the box because you're never going to see it, are you? It'd be nice to have this bit of paper in a little frame on the wall. Might have to do that. Don't want to damage it. Sorry this video is a bit long-winded, but believe me, there's some interesting bits in here. More greases, 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 greases. These are mainly greases. There's some plugs. Greases, greases, whatever's in this little thing. They look like minuscule little greases, about a dozen of them. But I'm hoping here there's going to be a greaser to fit in that rustum. We can actually have a look and try and find one right this minute. You know what I mean? So I can find the original greaser to go back in here. It's got to look something like this one. Yeah, so let's take this oiler out, what I put in yesterday, because that looks totally wrong. And let's see if we can we'll put that oiler back there, where because that's that was where it was. Which greaser looks about right? This one? Do this look about right? I don't look too far out. Will he fit? There you go. There you go. We now have another greaser. So our Rustin now has two greasers. If you're wondering, yes, the governor weights are gone off here. Now then, I have the governor weights. He put them in a little tobacco tin. And for the life of me right now, I can't put my hand on them. I think they're in a carrier bag. I think they're in a carrier bag in the camper van. Oh, I just found another oiler, which I had in this bag. So yeah, these are the oilers we picked up yesterday. But yeah, I do have the governor weights and the rod that goes through, because that's now missing as well. But I do not have the rod that connects the throttle to here. That's rotted away or snapped off. So if anybody has a governor rod, for an APR Rustin, let me know. If not, if you could be so kind as to measure from where the bends start to there so I could make one. That would be handy, but I really need a measurement so I can see how long this has got to be. Because, you know, yeah, make one the right length. So, yes, here's our APR. The governor's, I think, one of the governor weights broke because one of them I've got has been brazed. And it's been brazed well, but 
I don't know why they were taken out. Probably because one of them got caught in something, something dropped in there, it smashed. I don't know, but one of the governor weights has been brazed. So also, if you have a pair of governor weights for one of these, if you're breaking one of these engines, this governor rod and the governor weights would be very, very helpful. What else did we get? I think that's about it, guys, for now. Yeah, until I get the next load, I think that's it. But I'll show you around these spark plugs. Oh, there's a nice big greaser here. Look at that one. One pound fifty. I wonder when he bought that for one pound fifty. <laughs> a lot of this stuff, I think that's on the video. A lot of this stuff was dated, wrapped in newspaper, dated 1978. So a lot of this stuff's been in here a long, long time. But we have no end of greasers. There's little wick-fed oilers there. Look, look at them. More greasers. Yeah yeah so yes we have some lovely stuff oh and an old seven comb plug look isn't that marvelous right i'm going to put all these plugs gently back in there i don't want to crack them don't want to break them so we'll put them plugs gently back in there because they look like they go in some of my old engines i'd actually probably use them actually if they're, if they're all right there's an old pink lodge in there with the top on, look. That's nice. And this lovely old champion plug. What model champion was that? Tiny one. Champion Y5, look. So, guys, yeah, this is another box of what we got. And trust me, there is loads more back over there. And yes, you've seen the video, you know where it is. Um, please, out of respect... Do not contact the gentleman and ask to buy a load of stuff. He wouldn't appreciate it. Um, if you did want anything, please let me know and then I can get in touch with him. Please don't contact him directly because he does not want to be. He hasn't got time. He works full time. He hasn't got the time or inclination to be dealing with people about parts. So... Yeah, out of respect, please don't go to the calf and start asking to poke around. He will not appreciate it. He's a lovely guy, but he won't appreciate it. Right, here we go. We'll put all our bits back. I'm going to tidy all this up. Put all this stuff back in the shelter. And that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. There will be plenty more videos on getting all this stuff done getting all these things done you know we have a lot to be getting on with what's the first thing you want to see done guys what is the first thing you'd like me to try and get running i'll tell you what i'll leave it up to you and we'll go with what you said either of these two the bam ford sg or this big jap 55 compressor set bear in mind they are outside in the elements. I've uncovered them for this video, but so we would have to work on them outside. So working on these will be weather permitting, because if it's raining, I'm not going to be sitting out here working on engines. Ones we could be working on, that APR Ruston, we can be doing that right now. The other engines I haven't got yet, or we can make a start on this. Please say this, please say this one, please say this one. Or we can start working on this. Please say this one. But yeah, we can start working on this. <laughs> right. <laughs> Enough hints dropped. So we've got this one we could do. And joking aside, would you like to see this one done first? Doing that rust and APR. Or go on for these. If I'm honest, I think the easiest one to get going would be this one. Because as you've seen from the video, it was actually bolted to a concrete pad. You can see where that's where the bolts have been gassed off. This was actually bolted to a concrete pad and plumbed in. So I get a feeling this was actually a running machine. Well, it was a running machine he used for his compressed air. So I'm guessing a little tickle with the points to blow out of the carb, this thing would probably fire straight off. I haven't even checked for a spark, but pretty sure it would so we could do the big jap that's lovely the bam ford again that weren't bolted down 
but it was on a concrete pad. So I have a feeling that's a running engine as well. Pretty much. These probably were all running engines, apart from that rust and with its governor missing. So yes, we can see this, the IPR, one of them two out there. The other engines I haven't picked up yet. Oh, I forgot. He gave me a couple of old fair, hand-painted fairground signs as well. Look, all inquiries phone, but a phone number was never written. And we have another old handwritten sign here. Fair look. Look at that. So we have some nice old wooden signs just on scraps of plywood. Look, they do artwork like this. Love this sort of thing. These will be hung up in the shed. And an old lorry grill. See the big one? He did say that was from some form of Bedford, I think. Did he say Bedford J type? I don't know. Sorry, Steve. Can't remember what you said this grill was for. Steve will probably drop it in the comments, but that's an old bed Ford grill. And as you can see, pride of place, Steve, hanging in the shed. So when you walk in the door, that's the first thing you see is that old grill on the shed. But that will be rubbed down and we'll give that a lovely coat of gloss black, I think. Yeah, a gloss black or a nice red. We'll give that a nice coat of colour, make that look really pretty. I want a little display case up there to put these plugs in, put some little pieces in. Yeah, we can really make this shed something special. Somewhere where we don't just work, I can pull a chair in the corner and we can sit in here, talk crap and make videos. Do you know what I mean? You know, we've got stuff to be doing now. I need an old chest of drawers, which I think I'm going to put here, or an old um, TV cabinet or something. Some cupboard space where I can actually store all these magnetos in this dry wooden shed and actually keep them dry. I don't want them outside in that shelter. They will all be moved indoors. So yes, what would you like to see done? This, one of these two out here, or the rustling, or something else. Did you just like the walk around? Did you just like having a look at what we got? And if you're wondering, yes, this engine does turn. And the mag clicks. Oh, fuck me. That old compressor popped. Cool. I think we've got a little bit of compression as well. Not much compression. We might need them plugs out and a bit of oil down them. We might have a sticky valve. But I think that would be a nice easy runner. Burgess air filter on there. Tell you that as a remarkably nice original looking machine. One thing I want to point out on this. Have you noticed this top i assume originally it would have had a cast iron one someone's whittled this out of wood look and this was another thing i found appealing to it i'm assuming this had a cast iron top when that was new but over the years that's either got dropped and broke or lost cool. somebody has actually turned this out of wood look <laughs> look at that it's got a wood top on it yeah yeah you're never going to find an original cast iron top for this because i've never seen one so i think this wooden top is here stand to be honest with you i wouldn't change the wooden top anyhow but i think starting to crack so i think this needs a nice sand down and a nice coat of you know, um, yacht varnish or something, something waterproof where it'll handle the water and protect it a bit. Of course, that is really nice, isn't it? Just a shame it's starting to split through here. So we'll probably brush some PVA mix in that just to bond all that all that wood grain back together. We can brush some PVA over this. That'll go in the cracks dry and hopefully hold bind this together, rub it down, then varnish it. But yeah, a wooden top. And guys, do not be fooled to think that this is a small compressor set. It isn't. This is a monster. I've never seen a compressor. I love compressor units. I've heard of Broomwade and a lot of the other makes. I've never heard of a Lacey Hul Hulbert. I've never heard of a Lacey Hulbert compressor. I have heard of a Jap 55 engine, like I said, not the rarest engine out there by long means. 
but it's a nice original set which obviously have always been together and I don't intend breaking them up so they will stay together that is so heavy though that it needs its own trailer you are not going to be putting wheels on that and pulling it on and off trolleys because that must weigh half a ton it is an absolute mess very hard it took us all the time to slide this off the trailer yesterday so that's it guys we're going i want to give a massive thanks to mrs man cave for sticking by me through all this she came with me the weekend and she was an absolute trooper she didn't complain once yes the weather stayed dry it was relatively warm but it was blustery and yep she spent a lot of time in the calf with Lulu having a chat and having a cup of coffee but she also spent a lot of time in the sheds rooting around with us and she was always coming out to check on us are you alright have you found anything so thank you Mrs Mankay for putting up with me it takes one hell of a woman to put up with someone like me and all this do you know what I mean so guys if you like all this stuff and you have a woman hold on to her they're not easy to find. I have a very supportive one and I'll be forever grateful for Mrs. Mankay for her support in these endeavours. And yeah, she supports me in what I'm doing big time. There will be channel changes coming up in the future, but we'll do a separate video on them at some point. Because I have had a health scare of late and it's put a lot of things into perspective guys with my life where i want to go what i want to do and basically how much bloody time i've got left to be doing any of this and where i want to prioritize my time so there will be changes coming up hopefully towards the end of the year we'll have to see how things go but we'll get into them in another video and i'll give you the whole sordid sob story but for now we're, we're fine we are here and here we go we have everything we need. So, I'm going to leave this video here, guys. Sorry this is another long one, and it's all talk, talk, talk. But I hope you found something interesting. I hope you found what I've picked up interesting. And, yeah, if you'd like another video when I go back to get the other bits. I can't remember on the video, guys, whether I showed you a big welder generator thing. Um, it was an old Coventry Climax thing. Green stood about five foot high, four foot high, something like that, on four wheels, A-frame, and it had a four-cylinder Coventry Climax petrol engine. Do you remember, I can't remember whether I showed it on the videos, I think I glanced over and said he was trying to palm it off to me. Um, had a massive generator bell on one end, a water-cooled four-cylinder Coventry Climax in there, and the pretty gauges and everything in the top. He was trying to palm that off on me, and I was like, no, 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 what am I going to... But the more I'm thinking about it, and the more he's saying, if I don't take it, it's going in the scrap bin, I'm thinking when I go back, I should maybe take a bigger trailer and try and sneak that one out of there, because I could not bear to see it go in the scrap bin. And I was thinking, actually, we often need to do some welding. So having a welder generator sitting out there under a lean-to really wouldn't be a bad idea. Do you know what I mean? So if you ever arc weld something up, you just hand crank the old four-cylinder Coventry Climax. And then she'll weld. I think the thing was, low, you know, I think it was rated to about 300 bloody amps. I mean, that was a huge welder generator with a four-cylinder Coventry Climax petrol engine. It would be a beast. And yes, the engine did turn over, but I was just like, what am I going to do with that? And how am I going to get it home? But if I took a bigger trailer, I probably could get it home. No problem. But there you go. We're leaving this video now. We are rambling. So thanks very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you have watched this far at the end. God bless you. Because this has been all talk, talk, talk. And look, look, look. Right. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye from me. And it's bye-bye from... Mr. Sandhurst. Ah!